Hey guys, Matt here, and today we're going to be working on my wife's 2011 GMC Acadia. Uh, we're going to be replacing the multi-function switch for the wipers because they stopped working. Now, you might hear some background noise, and that is this guy right here is my dad. Uh, he's the one who taught me pretty much everything I know about cars. He's actually replacing the EGR on his Bonneville, so we're kind of working side by side here right now today. But gonna get into this thing see let you see how it's done and make it so you can get your wipers working again because from what I've read on the forums it's a pretty common problem all right so this switch right here is the one that's in question and in order to get that off we have to take apart this column in order to be able to, to get that out and get the new one back in so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by taking your adjustment lever pull that down then if we look you have one two three seven millimeter bolts that you need to remove. So we're gonna pull those out and then we'll go on to our next step. All right, so now that we have those out, now what we need to do is we need to get this bezel off. It's this plastic cover that covers all your gauges. So you have two bolts, one right here and then another one right on the other side right here. Both of those are also seven millimeter. We need to pull those out so that we can get that cover off. All right, so we got our two bolts out. Now when you pull this off, you gotta give it a pretty good tug to get it off. So there's one side, and here comes the other side. So you can see, I mean, I'm having to put quite a bit on this thing to get that out. And even then, it doesn't wanna fully come out because of these little base plates. So you just be careful on that. All you wanna do is just get that out a little bit so that you can have access to all of this. All right, so. Like I said, you can see right here that this is still connected right here. There's a clip that holds it to the slower dash portion. So we need to be able to get that out. So what we're gonna do is, real good thing, you can use a flathead screwdriver, but you're gonna tear up your dash and mar it up and everything. Uh, get a couple little interior trim shims, okay, that you can take and you can slide into little uh, crevices. That'll make it so you're not tearing up your dash and making it look real ugly. First thing we're gonna do is take this cover off. Just take your shim, pop it in here, and then pull, and you can see she starts coming off real easily. And we're gonna pop that off first, and then we'll get to the other side. All right, so I took this plate off. Now to get this, uh, you don't wanna go too far with it, but all you're gonna do is just take that little plastic shim, get it down into right in here, or even up on the top here, and just you know come on in and then pry that out. You don't need to go real far. You just need that a little bit loose. Once you do that, you can kinda of Press in on the passenger side and loosen that out, and then that whole bezel will come out. Now to make life a little easier on the install, come over to this side and just kind of pop that out. Now here's the thing, if your Acadia has a heads up display, you're gonna have some wires that connect right here. Make sure you unplug those, because otherwise you're gonna put some strain on those and you don't wanna do that. All right, so now that we have all that bezel removed and everything, uh, we need to be able to adjust this around a little bit in order to be able to get these covers off. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull this bolt again, 7 millimeter, and we're going to get that off. And then over here on this side, this one right here as well. And that's going to help us be able to move all this around a little bit better. Alright, so once you have those two top ones out, what you need to do is adjust your wheel as high up as you can. Lock it in place. Pull your dash down a little bit. And I don't know how well you guys can see this, but there's a bolt right in the center underneath here. And you're gonna need to be able to get that out. Uh, so, like I said, you don't need to do too much. All you're gonna do is just pull that down a little bit. There's a bolt right in the middle. And that's where you're gonna pull that one out as well. All right, so now that all the bolts are taken out, we need to split these covers. Uh, it comes in a two-piece cover and real easy way is uh, if you have some help uh, you can do it really easily and you need to push in on the bottom and you can see I've already done it but push in on the bottom real hard and then get your shim inside that crack and then just pop this upper piece off and do that on both sides uh, one of the things I did is in this I took and removed that last bolt down here just because it ended up being a whole lot easier uh, to maneuver everything around. Now, once you have that, you can kind of move this out and it takes quite a bit to get her out, but once you do, you can just let it hang down here and be out of the way. 
And as you can see, suddenly we are starting to have access to that switch. And with that bottom one out and removing that other bolt, I can just take this, this top section, and just slides right out. You can move that out of the way. So now I can actually access this switch. And what you're gonna need to do is you've got two plugs, one here and one here. You're gonna unplug those first. Remember, gray goes on top. They just have a little push tab in the middle and you'll be able to get them out. And then we can actually access the switch. There's two little plastic tabs, one on top, and then the exact same thing on the bottom. And then that whole switch assembly will come out. All right, so like I said, it's real easy. All you're gonna do is press in on this little tab right there on the middle, and it comes out really easily. It's a nice thing about a newer car. Plastic isn't as brittle. So it works like it's supposed to. And then you got a tab here and one right below it. You got a little tiny tab that sticks out. You can just put your finger on that if you want to and get that out. And just do both sides at once. And then the whole thing will work its way out pretty easy, okay? Like I said, there's a tab right there and a tab right there. And that's how we're going to get it out. All right, now something I would highly recommend you do in this is take your take your new switch and just plug the wires in uh, so that it'll work, okay? So just, you know, take the new switch, nothing crazy, nothing real fancy or anything. Just plug the wires in, insert your key, make it so your car has power. You don't want to start it, you just need to have it running. And then test your switch. And my wipers work. It's beautiful and it's a wonderful thing. So now, now that that's done, to get to all, put it all back together in the reverse order. Uh, the one thing that you want to do uh, outside of the other stuff is that bezel for your gauges. Put that in before you put this lower dash back on. So you'll do the whole column, get all that done and everything, then do the bezel then do the lower dash. Uh, and the reason for that is because the bezel has these little hook tabs on it on each side. And by putting the bezel in first, you guarantee that when this lower dash gets put up into place, that those hooks seat underneath it like they're supposed to and hold it in place just fine. So that is how you replace the multi-function switch on a 2007 to 2012 GMC Acadia Chevy Traverse Buick Encore and, or Enclave and a uh, Saturn Outlook I believe is what it is so uh, thanks guys for watching hopefully this video made your life a lot easier and made it so you saved a lot of money instead of having to take it to the dealership so one of the things I want you guys to understand when this is all going back together is these lower two portions of this column cover, they've got a lot of little tabs that you, let you line it up. What I found to work really well is to take and put this front bolt of the passenger side on and then you can move this little plastic or this little rubber piece around and make sure this driver side of the lower lines up and you get all your tabs lined up. Uh, be careful with it, you don't wanna break those tabs. And then pop a bolt in to hold it in place. And then do your top cover and get it all put back together. So a little extra bit for you guys uh, while I'm putting it all back together, something I discovered. Hope to make your life a little easier on you and make it so you don't run into some of the little confounding things I did.